Champenon's number is an infinite number, a non-repeating decimal, having infinite numbers after the decimal point. Seen this way, it may seem very uninteresting, but this implies that any possible combination of numbers exists in this number. If, through the programs used to transmit information over the internet, these infinite decimals are converted, somewhere in this infinite chain of digits there is the name of each person you will love. Also the day, the hour, and the way in which you will die. And the answers to all the questions in the universe. If you turn the numbers into a bitmap, somewhere in this infinite string of digits, there is a perfect image of the first thing you saw on Earth, the last thing you will see, and all the moments, vulgar or transcendental, that will occur between these two points. All the information that has existed or will exist, the DNA of every living being in the universe, everything, absolutely everything, included in this number, even this video. <sighs> Hi, and welcome to S for Science. And there are other numbers, like this one, like the number pi, that although they are also infinite, it is not known if they contain all the possible combinations of possible numbers. However, although it is not known if all these combinations exist, you can find your name in the first million digits of the number pi, if the numbers are translated to letters, taking into account the position that they occupy in the alphabet, being the A, 1, B, 2, and so on until the end. In my case, my name appears twice, appearing for the first time in the position 10,126,743. You can search for yours and even get a personalized coffee mug with your pi name. The number pi is one of the most important mathematical constants. See if it's important that it even has a modified Mazda 3 card model that contains, on the back of the car, the number. And it also has, in its honor, a restaurant, although there are possibly many more. And how not, it also has its day, March 14th, which is the third month of the year, which is also the day Albert Einstein was born. Curiously, it was Albert Einstein who said that there were only two infinite things, human stupidity and the universe, and that he wasn't too sure about the latter. Although, if you reflect on this phrase, if the universe in fact was infinite, it would mean that everything would be infinite as well. If we could confirm that the universe is infinite, then we could also say that there are infinite you. That is to say that scattered throughout the universe, there would be infinite people exactly like you. It sounds a bit weird, but it's true. If the universe was infinite, the chances that there would be infinite you would be 100%. But it gets better if the universe was really infinite, Apart from there being infinite you, there would also be infinite planets identical to the Earth, with a house identical to yours, with someone identical to you, watching a video identical to this one, made by someone identical to me. But that may not really be the case, because we don't have exactly an infinite view of the universe today. So that you understand the current conception of the universe, I will make an example with a balloon, but it has nothing to do with the real size and shape of the universe. It's simply an analogy. The universe is currently believed to be flat, finite and limitless. This means that despite having a measurable volume, it has no limit. We say that it is flat because the amount of energy and matter is precisely what is necessary for gravity and expansion to be in balance what is called critical density, and should cause the universe to expand more and more slowly. But for unknown reasons, it has been discovered that it does it faster and faster. So that you understand the analogy with a balloon, the universe would correspond to the surface of the balloon in such a way that the volume of the balloon can be measured, but the surface is unlimited, it has no end. Currently, the universe is expanding, and so that you understand this expansion, notice the two points that before the balloon was inflated were very close, now are very far. Now imagine Imagine what would happen if our universe had a high density. This would cause a point to be reached where gravity would collapse the universe, which would rapidly contract in on itself as if the balloon was deflating. This would cause a phenomenon called the big crunch and would cause a singularity like the one before our universe. However, it is currently believed that the expansion of the universe is accelerating more and more given its low density which will cause it to continue expanding in an unlimited way until the great tear occurs. A moment in which the cohesion of the particles will break and everything will be destroyed, as if it were an exploding balloon. Unfortunately, this is currently the most likely theory. Mathematics allow us to get a little closer to infinity. 
Leviathan's number, for example, is described as 10 to the 666 factorial. A factorial number is one in which all the numbers contained in the number are multiplied by themselves. 3 factorial, for example, would be 3 times 2 times 1. Now imagine doing the Leviathan's number. If 10 to the power of 666 is already an extremely large number, imagine doing the factorial. The number is so large that if you were to write it down in a piece of paper with small print, it would not fit in the observable universe. Currently, infinity is a concept that fascinates us. Unfortunately, we cannot get to it by counting. What if we were counting our whole lives? Well, we would arrive approximately up to the number 1,261,440,000. However, infinity has not always pleased us so much. In fact, the ancient Greeks, for example, only counted to 10,000, where their number system ended. But infinity gives us a lot of possibilities. There is a very curious theorem called the infinite monkey theorem, which says that if a monkey were to hit random keys on a typewriter for an infinite amount of time, would end up writing all of Shakespeare's plays. This famous theorem has been taken with humor, but in reality, it's true. Obviously, it is impossible to make a monkey or a set of monkeys write infinitely. However, computers allow us to get a little closer. And this is what was done. The website The Monkey Shakespeare Simulator, launched on July 1st, 2003, contains an applet that simulates a large population of monkeys typing randomly. With the intention of seeing how long it would take virtual monkeys to make a complete play of Shakespeare from beginning to end. Until now, a complete work has not been done, but several fragments have. The largest of which is a 24-letter fragment from the second part of the Henry IV play. The odds that a monkey can complete Shakespeare's plays in a time span similar to our lifetimes are infinitely small. That's why this experiment was programmed in such a way that every second that passes equals to a day. It also allows the monkeys to procreate among themselves in such a way that every time there are more monkeys. So, although we may not see it in our lifetime, surely in an infinite time they will manage to write all of Shakespeare's plays. All thanks to infinity. It is fascinating. So we have seen that infinity exists abstractly, mathematics has shown us, and it is very likely that it also exists in a material form. We don't know what lies beyond the observable universe, but there are more and more theories pointing to a possible infinite universe. In fact, there are some that even dare to point to the existence of infinite, infinite universes. So to know if the universe is really infinite or not, the difficult thing will be for our imagination to be infinite enough to be able to know the limits of infinity one day. Thank you very much for watching the video and goodbye.